If you clicked on this video, you're probably wondering how am I ever going to pass the Excel 2019 or MO200 exam when there's just no information out there about this exam. But don't worry. I'm going to share with you this practice exam with six projects that will show you tasks that are similar to the ones you might run into on your Excel exam so that you can be well prepared. We're going to look at chart elements, new Excel functions, and tons of other skills you need to learn for your exam. Hi there, my name is Mike, and I'm a teacher who believes in accessible learning to help you unlock new opportunities. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to help you try and pass your MO200 exam, or the Excel 2019 exam. So let's get started. This first project is all about Patreon members, so I thought I would give a quick shout out and a big thank you to my Patreon members for supporting this channel. And if you want all access to the practice files from this video and future videos, consider becoming a patron of this channel. You can sign up with the link in the description box below. So the first task on this Excel practice exam is going to ask us to navigate to the range total and delete the contents of the selected cell. Now in the Excel 2019 version of this exam, you're going to have to locate a range and also apply a range in formulas. So it's good that you know how to find a range. So the way you do that or find a range is go to the name box here. This is called the uh, name box in the Excel window and then click the drop arrow and then find the name range that you want here. I'm going to click on the total one. It's going to take us down to this cell and then it's just asking us to delete. So I'm going to click delete on my keyboard and now we've completed task one. Task two is going to ask us to, on the patrons worksheet in cells H6 to H20, we're going to format the numbers to no decimal places. So the way you can quickly highlight a range like that is just type it in the name box like we did in the last step. But this time we're going to type in the range H6 and then colon H20. So a really quick way to highlight a big range like this. And then press enter. And then from here we can do a few things. There's a few ways to complete this task. But I think the quickest one is to go to the numbers group in the home tab. And then for your exam you might have to increase the decimals to two places or decrease them. So for this one we want to click decrease decimal twice. So I'll do that with my mouse, and that's how you would complete task two. Task three is going to ask us to remove the table row containing the patron uh, Abraham Shirker, and then do not change any content outside the table. So that last part is really hinting that it doesn't want you to change the whole row. So this is in row 18. Uh, if we wanted to delete the row contents, we would just click here and then right click and then delete. But this is the table. So the table starts with Abraham and then ends with $6. So we have to highlight this area. And then I think the quickest way to do this is to just right click this highlighted area, uh, go to the delete options, and then click the uh, table rows. And you're going to see that row on the table uh, kind of disappears. And we've deleted it. So just keep that in mind. If it says delete a table row, you're not deleting the worksheet row. You're just deleting the row within the table. Task 4 is going to ask us to navigate our way to cell M5. And then we're going to calculate the average income from the total column. And I'm going to show you a quick way to select a column within a function. So I'm going to click in cell M5 here and then type equal average open bracket. And then you can highlight the column, but I think a quicker way to do that or to select a whole column is to press H colon H, close the bracket and then press enter. And that would probably be the quickest way to complete a task like task four. So task five, we're going to use a function to create an email list by joining the last name of every patron with the address at patreon.com. So in earlier versions of the Excel exams, you would use a function called the concatenate function to join uh, values from two different columns or rows. But in this 2019 version, you're going to use something called the concat function. So it's just a shorter version of concatenate. It's just concat. And they want you to use that for the 2019 version. I'll show you what I mean. So when I start typing concat, notice that the concat option 8 is fine. And then the concatenate option has like a yield sign. So they don't want you using that one. So in the 2019 one, um, you're just going to use concat. I'll do open bracket. And then I'm going to click the insert function uh, button here to show you how this is going to work. So in the, the first text string has to be the last name. So I'm going to click on this cell here. And then you can either type in quotation marks at patreon.com and quotation marks, or you can copy and paste. So I'm just going to press control V. I'm going to paste because I copied it from the instructions and you can do that on your exam too. So if you're worried about making spelling mistakes, uh, just copy and paste. So this says at, Oh, I've got to get the quotations right here. So open quotation. 
and close quotation marks. And then here's a little preview. So it says smith at patreon.com, uh, press OK. And then the whole uh, table will fill up. So I'm just going to click auto fit so you can see that it worked. And that's how you complete a task like task five. For task six, we're going to remove the table functionality from the table. And that's easier than it sounds. So we're just going to click inside of the table. And then from here, we're going to go to the table design tab and click on that. And then you just click on the uh, convert to range in this tools group here. So if I say click convert to range, watch what happens to the range uh, once I click that. And it says, do you want to convert the table to a normal range? We'll click yes. And now when I click inside this range, the table options go away. So that's how I know that I've done that correctly. So the last task for this project, we're going to use an Excel feature that allows row five and the title to remain visible as you scroll vertically. Now that last part really tips you to the point that we need to freeze that part of the worksheet as we scroll vertically down the page. So if you see uh, remain visible as you scroll vertically, that should tip you off that, OK, they want me to freeze this part of the worksheet. Now, the tricky part about freezing is you don't select row 5 to freeze that and above. You actually select the row below uh, what you want to freeze. So it would actually be row 6. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight row 6 and then click in the View tab. And then I'm going to go to the Freeze Panes Options drop arrow here and just click the normal. Um, freeze panes because it's the um, selection that I want. So it's the freeze panes. It's none of these options here. So it's just this one. And now when I scroll down, row five and everything above it um, remains there as I scroll down the page. For task one, we're going to go to the orders worksheet. And then we're going to extend the formula in cell G2 to the end of the table column. So the way you do that is click on cell uh, G2, and then just go to the bottom right corner, use the autofill handle, and drag the formula down. That sort of copy and paste the formula uh, to the other cells. As you can see, it's the similar, it's the exact same formula, um, just different numbers that it's referring to. And that's what um, task one is asking us to do. Task two, we're going to remove all formatting from the order amount totals worksheet. So we'll go over to that worksheet. And then in the Home tab, in the Conditional Formatting drop arrow, there's an option to clear rules. And we have to be sure which, one, which option we uh, want. And the instructions are asking us to clear it from the, uh, not the selected cells, but from the entire worksheet. So we'll click on that option. And you can see the conditional formatting disappear. And that's how you would complete a task like task two. Task three is going to ask us to format this table so that every other row is shaded. And we're going to use a technique that automatically updates the formatting if you insert a new row. So that's just a fancy way of saying add banded rows to this table. Uh, on your exam, you might have to add banded rows or banded columns, but the wording will sound something like this. So if I click inside of this table and then click on the table design tab that pops up, it's in the table style option group here. And then you either have banded columns or banded rows. This question is asking us uh, for banded rows. Once I click on that, you can see that the rows are now shaded every other row and it would automatically update uh, if we inserted a new row. Task 4 is going to ask us to take two columns and perform something called a multi-sort, which is going to allow us to sort the two columns at the exact same time. And then we're going to add priority to the first one that we sort. So we're going to sort the delivered to um, column and then also the uh, customer type column. So the way you would do that is click somewhere inside the table and then go to the data tab and there's the multiple sort icon right here. So we'll click on that one. So this is going to add, we can, we can just sort by one column or we can add a level. And that's where uh, the sort dialog box comes in. So the first one is the delivered to. Now there's two ways you can complete something like this. Uh, if we know that Toronto comes, so we want Toronto um, entries to come first. We know that Toronto is later in the alphabet than O, Ottawa. So we could just do this, Z to A, or you could do a custom list where you did Toronto, um, comma, Ottawa, and then add it. Uh, both ways, you'd get um, a correct mark for that. So uh, Z to A would work, or a custom list starting with Toronto, and then you'd say comma, Ottawa. That could work too. So that's the, um, the first column that we've sorted. Now we have to add a level. So we can uh, sort multiple columns at the same time. So then we're going to sort the orders alphabetically 
uh, in the customer type field. So the customer type column, and it says from A to Z, and then we're going to click OK. And then you can see all the Toronto entries are uh, grouped together, and then by the uh, customer type second. So that's how you would perform a multi-sort in your Excel exam. For task five, we're going to enter a formula in cell J2 that uses an Excel function to return the net amount value of the individual order that is the highest. So if we see that word the highest, that is the maximum function or the max function. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm in cell J2 and then start typing equal max, open bracket. And again, I'm gonna use that little shortcut to highlight the whole column. So H colon H and then close bracket, I'll press enter. And now the highest value in that column column is 8,623. For task six, we're gonna use an Excel data tool to remove all records with duplicate invoice number values from the table. And then we're not gonna remove any other records. So we don't wanna um, remove all duplicates, just the ones from the invoice number column. So there's two ways you can do that. You can click inside, if it, this is a structured range, I would use the data tab and then click remove duplicates. You can do that here too, wouldn't be wrong, but because it says values from the table, I would actually do that within the table design tab and then click the uh, remove duplicates button here. So I'm gonna click that and then I'm gonna unselect all and only choose the invoice number column because we don't want to um, delete the values or duplicate values from these columns, just the invoice number one. So I'll press okay. It says there's one duplicate and it's been removed and we'll click okay and that's how you complete a task like task six. For task one, it's gonna ask us to configure the profit analysis worksheet so only cells A1 to H21 will be printed. Now there's a few ways you can do this, but there's only really one right way to do this, and I'm gonna show you that way. So uh, the right way to do this is to click on the page layout tab, and then to make it easier, I'm gonna show you the page break preview uh, view. So first of all, we have to get rid of this uh, page two line here. So I'm just gonna drag it off of our selection here and drop it in this gray area. And then from here, I'm gonna type in the name box. I'm gonna type in the range that we need. So it's A1 colon H21, press enter. That's gonna highlight the area that we need. And then inside of this page layout tab in the page setup group, here's the print area drop arrow. Click on that and then click on the set print area option. And once I click on that, the area that we need, A1 to H21 selected, and only that area will print. And now I can go back to uh, my normal view, knowing that only that area will print, and I've completed task one. So for task two, we're gonna look at the quarterly profit analysis table. And in the product code column, we're only going to, we're gonna filter out anything that doesn't start with FA. So we want these three values to show, and we don't wanna delete these uh, values here, but we just wanna hide them for now and kind of just filter them out. So the way you do that is click on the filter button. And there's two ways that you could technically do this. Because this is a short list here, I could just unselect anything that doesn't start with FA. But if you had a really long list, that might be a little bit troublesome. So a quick way, if you had a really long list, you could click on the text filters option here and say, uh, click on begins with, and then begins with, just type FA, press OK. And that's how you could quickly filter out if you had a long list uh, values that start with FA. Okay, so before we tackle task three, I want you to stop and think, which, fu which function are we using in this scenario? Okay, so I'll read it out and, and you think about which function would you use in this case. So in the bestseller column, use a function to display the word yes if the value of the product in the average column is greater than 10. Display the word no if it is not greater than 10. So did you think we're using the average function, the average if function, or just the if function. And it's just the if function, and we know this through the question because there's two outcomes, yes or no. So on your exam, if you have a task like this that has two outcomes, maybe it's something like yes, no, over budget, within budget, that kind of thing, two outcomes, we're using the if function. Okay, and this is how we would use the if function in this scenario. So I'm gonna click in cell H5, and then start typing equal if, and we're gonna look at the value in the cell next to this one and see if it's over 10. Okay, so equal if, open bracket, and then we're gonna click the insert function button here. And then, so we have three things we need to fill out this function. So we have a logical test, which is in the question, the value of true, which is pretty straightforward, it's just yes. 
value of false is no. Okay, so that's the easy part. The hard part is sort of telling which is the, what what is the logical test, and um, how can we know it's true. So, look at the question. Um, it's asking if this cell is greater than ten. Okay, so that cell, or maybe it's a name range. You might have to deal with a name range where you type the name of a range in there, and then is it greater than ten? Okay, so that's our logical test, and we see that the value is true, and it should be, because we can see the number is 18.33, so obviously greater than 10. Then we have to put in our true value, which is yes, with a capital Y, in quotation marks. So if you're using a text value, you have to put quotations around it, and then a no if it doesn't meet that criteria, or criterion. Okay, so close quotation marks, and this is going to come out as a yes when we press OK. And then you see for the, because this is a table, it'll just fill automatically down for you. Um, so this one's yes, yes, and this one's a no, because obviously it's not greater than 10. So that's how you would use the if function. And I hope that makes it easier to spot if you're dealing with an if function. So look for those two outcomes. So in task four, we're gonna use a simple operation. So on your exam, you might be at, um, asked to add, subtract, divide, or multiply. And it's just a straight sort of like two values. You multiply them, you divide them, or you subtract them or add them. Um, in this case, we're going to add these two numbers. So the way you would do that is type equal. And if you were adding them together, I'd click on the first value. And then uh, plus uh, this one. Or if these were name ranges, you just put in the name plus and then this name range here and then press enter. So you might just have a simple operation like that. So not um, that falls within the functions and operations uh, portion of your test. So you might have something like that. So if you're not sure how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, um, you might want to review that. So for step five, we're going to create a clustered column chart that is you know, shows the description of the product and the months in quarter one, so January to March. And then we're going to use the product description as the horizontal axis labels. And then we're going to place the chart to the right of the table. OK, so this one can be a little bit challenging because we have to collect two different ranges here that aren't adjacent to each other. So we will highlight the description area. I'll press control on my keyboard so that I can also and simultaneously grab onto the January to March uh, area with the numbers. And then I'll go to insert. Um, I'll choose charts. And then all charts here. And the first one that comes up is the clustered column chart. So that's the one we want. We press OK. Now you can just double check. So I'm going to put this to the right like the question's asking. You can double check that we've got the right um, horizontal axis labels here. And this is obviously the, the right one. But just to show you, just so you can double check, when you go to select data, if you look at the horizontal axis labels, right here we have the um, description. So that's, that's what we wanted. Um, the months are the legend entries. So when we press OK, we know that we've done this correctly because the description is in the um, horizontal axis labels. If it wasn't, um, if it was the months instead, you could always do this, switch row and column, and then it would switch it to the months um, being the horizontal axis labels. But we'll just switch it back, and that's how you'd complete a task like task five. For task six, we'll add the alt description uh, units sold in quarter one to the chart. Um, alt descriptions are really great for pictures and charts. Maybe someone has some visual challenges. So that the um, if they had a program set up, the um, the alt description would describe the chart to them. So um, that's why you would add some alt an alt description to a chart or picture or table um, in an Excel worksheet. So we'll click on this chart to do that, and then click on the format tab, and then we'll click the alt text icon here, and then we'll just I will just copy and paste uh, this text in there. So just to save us time, I think that's the easiest way to do that. And then just leave out the uh, quotation marks if you're doing something like this on your exam. And then you can close that, and it'll be there. So when we click Alt Text again, uh, the description's right there. So for our last task in this project, we're going to insert column spark lines to represent the units sold from January to March. And we're going to start in cell I5 here. So I5, you would go click on that cell. And then in the Insert tab, you're going to look for the spark lines group. And it wants a column spark line to represent and the data the data range is from January to March. Okay, so we have the where the um, spark line is being put right here and the data range that we want, we'll press okay. And then what's great about that is just like a formula, you can copy that down 
and then you have a visual representation of the first quarter and how many units were sold uh, just quickly within a cell. Task one in project four is pretty straightforward. We're going to uh, click on A1 and then in the home tab in the alignment group, just select align left and you'll notice that the text July sales goes over to the left of this merged cell range. For task two, we want to generate a code in the code column by using a function to display the first two letters of the business types from column D. So that is the left text function. And the way you would do that is uh, equal left. And then think about the right function as well. The right would work the opposite way, where it'd be the last two letters of the word. So if you wanted the first two letters, you'd use the left function. So equal left, and let's see the function um, arguments boxes that we need. So the text is group, okay, or if that was a name range, it would be the business type. Um, and that would be the number of characters is two. So two from the left, and you see it like a little preview. So that's how we would generate our code from the first two letters of the business type column. Press OK, and that kind of fills out. So now we know we have a short form code uh, for these business types. So for task three, I thought I would try a new conditional formatting uh, that I haven't added in my previous videos, which is the uh, traffic lights uh, to format the values. So let's see what that looks like. So we'll highlight the amount column. So we'll highlight the amount column, and then I'll click on the conditional formatting, which helps you spot patterns in your data. And I'm gonna use, uh, the traffic lights are an icon set, and it's the unrimmed traffic lights so the three traffic lights unrimmed that's this one and it kind of just very g vaguely gives you sort of like which numbers are higher which ones are medium and which ones are pretty low so green is higher numbers yellow is sort of medium numbers and red uh, lower numbers okay so it just helps you visualize your data maybe spot the higher numbers and where they're coming from and that sort of thing so that's how you would add um, the three traffic light conditional formatting to this column so for task four, we'll change the color and style of this table to olive green table style medium. And so we'll click inside of this table. That's gonna allow this table design tab to pop up. Once I click on that, the table styles gallery is here. I'll probably have to click here to look at all of the table styles, but the one we want is right here. So the olive green table style medium four. Wouldn't be a bad thing to sort of just uh, skim around and just get to know where some of these uh, styles are this is the light group the medium and then also the dark group as well at the bottom But the one we want is right here and I'll click on that and that's how you would complete task four So for task five We're gonna see if we can match the chart color with the table color and apply the monochromatic palette three to the chart So when you click on the chart uh, You'll click on the chart design tab and then over here. There's an option to change colors So click that drop arrow go to the third color in the monochromatic group and it's monochromatic palette three and that one will help us uh, match the colors for the table and the chart. So for our last step in this project, we're gonna go to the chart and then display a data table under the series without legend keys. So we'll highlight the chart first. We'll click on the chart elements. So if you ever have to change anything about a chart, it's probably in the chart elements here. Uh, we'll click on that and then we'll click the data table and then we'll look at the options and just make sure that there's um, no legend keys. So apparently there is, we're gonna change it to no legend keys. And this is what that should look like if you've done this correctly. Well, for task one in this project, we're going to import data from a text file, and then we're gonna use the first row of the data source as headers. So in cell A1, we're going to click on that cell and then click the data tab and then click on from text or CSV. So click that icon. And then on your exam in your documents folder, you'll see the text file pop up when you do this. So I'll double click on that. And then the preview looks great. It actually already has the first row of data as headers. So that's, that's already done for us. But what you don't wanna do is click load right away. You wanna click load to because sometimes in the settings, it'll just load to a different worksheet and that's not what we want. We want it to load to an existing worksheet. So just make sure that uh, you change, if that's the setting that was there, change it to existing worksheet in A1 and we'll press okay. And then we have our uh, new table. For task two on this items worksheet, we're gonna adjust the column width of column A to exactly 21 points. 
So we'll click and highlight column A, and in the Home tab on the right side, there's a format drop arrow. So we'll click there, and that's where you'll find the column width and how to adjust that column width. And then we'll just click um, 21 here and press OK. And now we've sort of extended it just a little bit to exactly 21 points. For task three, we'll go to the sales worksheet, and then we're going to move this pie chart here to its own chart sheet, and then we're going to name that chart sheet quarterly sales. So the way you would do that is first select the chart. So I'm going to take my mouse, select the chart, and then go up to the chart design tab, and we'll click there. And then we're going to choose the move chart icon. And there's two options here. We have the move the object to a different worksheet, or we can create a new sheet, and that's what the task is asking us to do. And this is where the name would go. So I'm just going to quickly type that in. So quarterly sales, and then press OK. And then what you should see is the chart kind of blow up into its own chart sheet. And it should be sort of down here in the worksheets, uh, where your worksheets are located. And it doesn't matter where I place this new uh, chart sheet, just as long as it uh, pops up as its own chart sheet. Task 4 is going to ask us to go to the Merch Worksheet, and then we're going to modify this chart so that uh, dollar amount, or the word dollar amount, is the primary vertical access title. So sometimes when you get a task like this, the access titles won't be visible, so you have to turn them on through the chart elements. So we'll click on the chart first, and then go to the plus sign um, that represents chart elements. We'll click on that, and then you might have to turn them on. So we'll turn access titles on, and then the primary vertical one is right here. So I'm just going to click somewhere in there, uh, delete this placeholder title here, and then just retype in um, dollar amount. So just make sure it's spelled the same way as dollar amount in the question, and then we can click outside of the chart, and that's how you complete a task like task four. Our final task for this project is going to ask us to remove the legend from the chart and display the values as data labels above the column. So again, this can all be done in the chart elements option. So we'll click on the chart. And then we have to do two things within the chart elements. We have to remove the legend. So we can just unselect this. So the legend disappears. And then add data labels. And there's a few options, but the default option is what we want. Um, if yours wasn't like that, you could just kind of uh, choose your options here. It doesn't specifically say to do anything like that, so we're just going to leave it alone. But if it said outside end or something like that more specific, um, that's where your options would be. But it doesn't tell us um, where to put them. It just says above the column, so the default gets us exactly where we need to go. And I would just leave it like that to complete a task like task 5. For the first task in project 6, we're going to copy the formatting of the title and subtitle on the documentation worksheet to the title and subtitle of the menu items worksheet. So that sounds like copy and paste in some way, but it's actually using the format painter option in Excel. So I'll show you how that would work. So we're going to go over to the documentation worksheet, and then we want to copy this formatting. We don't want to copy the words, but we want to copy the formatting and then apply this to an already existing title and subtitle on the menu items worksheet. So the way you would do that is highlight um, cells A1 and A2. That's where this typing begins. And then we're going to click on the Format Painter once. So we'll click once. We'll hop on over to the menu items worksheet. And then just highlight A1 and A2 on this worksheet as well to apply the same formatting. And as you can see, um, it's applied the same formatting, and we saved ourselves some time from reformatting this title and subtitle. So for task two, we're going to name the table on the menu items worksheet as units sold. Now you have to be careful with this one because some people go do that in the name range. And when we give a table a name, it will appear as a drop arrow option um, in the name range. but that's not where we create the name. So you don't create the name range here. That would be for a structured range. So if you had a range like here um, that's not a table, we could create that name range in the name box here. But when it comes to a table and naming a table, we actually click somewhere inside of the table, and then we have to go to the Table Design tab. So we'll click on that. And then this is where we would rename the table. Instead of Table 1, we'll call it Units underscore sold because you can't have two different words um, in the name of a table. You have to link it with an underscore or something like that. So units sold, uh, capital U, capital S. We'll press enter. And now we've named our table. And we could come back to this table. Let's say we're outside of the table. 
And this will appear in the name box, but when you're creating a table name, you have to do it within the table options. So speaking about name ranges from the last task, you might have to use name ranges within a formula on your Excel 2019 exam. So this is very unique to the Excel 2019 version of these types of exams. Um, they want you to use more name ranges when it comes to formulas. These can help you avoid uh, mistakes if you set up name ranges ahead of time and then use them within a formula. So we're gonna do that here for task three and I'll show you how that'll work. So we have four different ranges and we're gonna add them together. And there's a few ways you could do this, but I think the easiest way is to type in equal sum and then open bracket and then just kind of list the four different ranges. So I'll start typing them and they'll pop up. So to save time, I'll just start typing them and then just click on them. So specialty total and then put a comma. Uh, we'll do the next number, which is uh, smoothies total, smoothies total. So no space, just put commas. Uh, in between them and then we'll do the next one sandwiches total and then I'll just click just to save time and then comma uh, soups total so I'll just make sure I've got all four and they're different um, specialty smoothies sandwiches and now soups and then close the bracket and then press enter and now we've got like a grand total and we've used name ranges in the formula instead of cell references for the fourth task in this project, we're going to go to cell K48 and on the we're going to use a function to calculate how many missing entries there are for the month of September. So again, this is new to the Excel 2019 version of this exam. And this is the count blank function because we are trying to find out in the column how many blank entries there are, how many blank entries have we missed and that kind of thing. So how many um, entries are we missing? So that's what we're trying to count. That's a function called count blank. So I'll type equal count blank right here and then open bracket and then I'll just select this range here. So select uh, this range and that's going to look through the column, see how many entries I am missing. So I'll close the bracket and press enter and that's how many I'm missing. So I'm missing five, five entries in that column and that's how you would uh, use the count blank function on your exam. If you need more practice, again, check out my Patreon page to get access to the practice files, or if you want to take a deeper dive into what will be on your Excel 2019 exam, I've got a whole course on Udemy that can help you out. I'll put the link in the description box below. And one more thing, if this video helped you at all, remember to share your success in the comments, and good luck studying!